the the basic understanding that this work rests on is that whenever we encounter somebody else's dream we have no choice but to imagine our own version of the dream whether we're listening or reading or even picking it up out of the ether telepathically it's still us who's picking it up and so the idea of the dream is formed out of our own experiences and our own projections and the basic difference between my way of working and most other people's ways is that I like everyone who speaks to remind themselves and everybody else that we are conscious that we're talking about our own imagined version of the dream rather than the dream itself and keep the commentary in the confessional first person rather than the accusatory second person uh, because any second person comment is an accusation even if it's complimentary and i'm sure everyone here has had the experience of saying oh you're so smart or some other seemingly complimentary thing and the person who is receiving the remark going oh no 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 it's not me don't say don't say complimentary things to me because even that is an accusation and all of us human beings are inherently predisposed to respond to accusations with anxious feelings and argument even if it's complimentary so it means altering the language habits of a lifetime but it really makes a tremendous difference not to put too fine a point on it i think it makes the difference between a psychological exercise and an authentic spiritual discipline spiritual encounter and the second thing i would like to say just to everybody is that i rely heavily on the work of carl jung i do not worship the man and i do not think that everything he says is gospel i think he got a bunch of things wrong most of the things he has to say about gender for example are wrong just kick him to the curb pay no attention but the things that he does get right are so important that we ignore him and his work at our peril not only our individual peril but our collective peril and one of the gifts he gives us is that he provides us with a set of language which enables us to talk about religious concerns without imposing traditional re religious language on the conversation and one of the most useful categories from my point of view that he has provided us is this idea of the shadow that every one of us has aspects of our own interior being that we just don't know what to do with and if those aspects present themselves initially as unpleasant or untrustworthy or rep reprehensible we tend to deny those aspects of our own being and hallucinate them as the exclusive property of other people the technical name for it is projection we all project i must confess to you a certain amount of irritation that this particular way of work has to get called projective dream work which implies that there are all these other ways of doing dream work that are not projective i don't believe that's the case i believe it has inherently to do with how human beings communicate with each other and it's particularly clear when what we're doing is sharing dream memories that i can be an absolutely sincerely convinced died in the wool freudian behaviorists and i can believe consciously that everything i know about the unconscious in general and dreams in particular is objective and scientifically verified experimentally 
And the moment somebody tells me a dream, I have no choice but to imagine my own version of the dream. And as soon as I imagine it and apply all this supposedly objective information that I have, it becomes an exercise in projection, whether I acknowledge it or not. One of the reasons I believe in this work so deeply is that dream work, from my point of view, is simply an obvious venue for figuring that out. And one of the things that often happens, I suspect it has happened to various people on this call, is that there's a realization, oh, oh, it's not just other people's dream narratives that I'm projecting on. It's everything. We are all projecting unconsciously every day. And group projective dream work has the advantage of creating a venue where that realization becomes more immediately accessible. And in addition to that, it's really the same point, but made in different language. The conversation that us human beings have been having with each other about our dreams remembered from sleep is pretty clearly, demonstrably, from my point of view, the oldest spiritual conversation that we human beings have ever had. And it is continuous and unbroken, even back before the evolution of Homo sapiens. We're talking about Homo habilis and Homo erectus. Fairly clearly, they also had language, and one of the things they did was talk to each other about their dreams. And one of the things Carl Jung does for us is to allow us to talk about the recurring patterns in dreaming that unite us all across all the differences that we use to separate ourselves from each other. Differences of language and gender and experience and passionately held convictions and the lack of them. This conversation about what are our dreams doing is the oldest spiritual conversation that we have engaged in and continue to engage in, which from my point of view says that any conversation about dreams is ultimately a spiritual conversation, whether that is consciously acknowledged by any of the participants or not. The main practical thing that has to do is we must overcome the habits of a lifetime. And the phrase that is the one that I am promoting, you can use any phrase you like, the phrase, if it were my dream, has been promoted for decades and works just fine. About three years ago, I decided to change the emphasis, not because it wasn't true, but because it was weak. It isn't if it were my dream, it is my dream. And how did it get to be my dream? I imagined it. So the phrase that I am promoting in my teaching now is, in my imagined version of this dream. You can, you can use if it were my dream, you can use any form that you like. The important thing is to reaffirm consciously each time we speak, I'm remembering, I'm making the effort to remember that I'm talking about my own projections. Now I'm talking about my own projections and I suspect what I'm saying may be true for you as well, but the only thing I know for sure is it's true for me as I imagine my dream. 